Shani Fannies, welcome to Educating Shani. I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder. Hi Shani, hi. So guess what today is, as you can tell from the title of this video. It's finally time for this week's Q&A videos. Um, I kept putting it off. First I was in the hospital and that set me behind and then yesterday I really wanted to do that video about Eugenia. Um, and so I pushed it and pushed it and now we're finally here. <clears throat> And when I and on the video where I went to the hospital, I asked you guys to leave me questions on that video, and so that's what I'm going to read. Um, scanning over these, I haven't really read much of them, but scanning over it, I've got a lot more than I thought I would get, just like last time with Instagram. So if I don't answer your question, don't be offended. I'm just going to try and pick the ones that I that are most likely I've not answered before, or that are not, you know, similar to what I've answered before. It. it at least like recently like if it's something i answered like a year ago then yeah i'll re-answer but if it's something recently that i talked about <coughs> is it gone no why do i get these frogs in my throat and i don't know where they come from and why don't they ever go away what's i talking about here's the thing though you guys have no, there's really no way of knowing if I've already answered your question unless you go and watch the hours and hours and hours and hours of Q&As that I've done. So don't be afraid to ask. Um, just know that if I don't answer, it's nothing personal. Either I've already answered it before or I just don't have enough time to get to all of your questions. So I'll just do my best. Who knows, maybe I will get through them all, but let's just go ahead and see. This is gonna be part one. There will be two parts today. Um, and, um, crap, I was going to say something else. What was I going to say? I don't remember. If it comes to me, then I'll tell you. Okay? Okay. Okay. Huh. Okay, Shanna, 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 Shanna the Sheep says, when you are recovering from an eating disorder, bulimia, um, does that mean that you binge and purge sometimes? Sorry if you already answered this, but I really want to know. By the way, I love you, Shanna. I love you too, Shanna, Shanna, Shanna. How do you say your name? S-H-A-N-A. -A. I don't know. It's pretty though. Sounds a lot like my name, so it's got to be gorgeous. Why do you guys like me? Well, I have always said, I should like just draw it for you. I think I should draw, although last time I draw, I drew something for you guys, I accidentally drew a penis. Um, I did not mean to, and it was so funny that I had to leave it on. If you guys missed that video, um, I'll try and remember to put, put the link to it below. It was the one about um, the story time about how a cow saved my life. I totally drew a penis and did not mean to. It was hilarious, so. Today I'll try and keep it cleaner. Let's see. Okay, so in my mind, I'm I was here with my eating disorder. Now I'm here in eating disorder recovery, and I'll explain that in a minute. And I want to be completely recovered. Okay, so I was here when I started this channel, and then as the time went on, I started getting a little bit better. And then I started like entering the realm of recovery where I felt like I was actually in recovery. And to me, that means that means I'm trying. I'm like being proactive and getting myself better and not doing the behaviors as much, fixing myself mentally, fixing myself in all the ways. Um, so that's what I consider um, being in recovery. So when I started this channel, I said, hi, I'm Shani and I have an eating disorder. That's what I said. And then someone, I do this every time I talk about this, I forget who it was. Please remind me if it's you. Someone suggested that I start saying, I'm Shani and I'm recovering from an eating disorder because by that time I was. And so I did. And someday I hope to say, I'm Shani and I'm recovered. Uh, from an eating disorder. So that's the difference, I guess. I feel like in recovery means that you are trying. You are proactively <clears throat> not doing those things anymore. You're proactively heading for that instead of that. So that's my opinion. Okay, let's move on. I hope that answered your question. I don't know where this frog in my throat is coming from, but maybe soda will help, don't judge me. By the way, I shake my soda up because I don't like carbonation very much but I love the taste of it. 
<clears throat> so I'll show you what I do in a minute because I have to shake it and then I have to let it sit and then I shake it and let it sit and then I'll show you the trick to not making it explode. So it's really special. Ah, okay. I really should sing about my poop. It's been a while. Um, Stephanie King says, love you, Shani. Love you too, Stephanie. <gasps> this message may not make any sense, FYI. To be honest, your channel has played a huge role in my recovery, and I just can't thank you enough. Aww. Um, I've been really happy and inspired lately, and I'm excited about it, but at the same time, I'm afraid that those feelings of happiness aren't real, and that maybe it might be a problem. I mean, do I have a problem because I can recognize that I'm not capable of admitting that I have a problem, if that made sense? Well, I'm a little slow, so I don't know. Like, I'm conscious with a few, I'm conscious, co-conscious. What does co-conscious mean? I'm co-conscious with a few of my alters or alternate, alter, alternate states of, alternate states of consciousness. Thank you. And maybe they're the ones telling me that I have a problem. But anyway, the question I have for you is, will you ever do a Draw My Life video? Love you. I love you too. Wait, do you not want me to talk about the first thing? Cause, well, I don't know. Um, as far as the Draw My Life video goes, yeah, I have no idea what the crap it is, but I'd be happy to do one. Um, I've seen like it will pop up in my sidebar like I've seen, you know, YouTubers that I'm subscribed to, it pops up like you should watch this, Draw My Life or whatever, but I have no idea what it actually is. Is it something like this? Does this count? I'm really good at drawing. It's this and penises all the time, so. I'm going to use this right now because if I'm trying to get what you're saying. Okay, so I get the idea that you feel like you want to get better, but that you can't actually do the action of it. And you're frustrated because you really, really, really want it, but you don't want to, but you don't want it. That made no sense, but I think you know what I mean. Um, so like for me, when I started here, um, I kind of wanted it like I wanted like and I'm talking when I started my YouTube channel not not before that because I definitely did not want to get better before that but when I started I wanted to get better but I didn't feel it in me that I could or that I would I guess and so I started faking it I started going by that motto fake it till you make it hoping that someday I would get to this area where I would feel where it would become almost habit or natural, I guess, to start getting better. And it worked. I started faking my way through it. I faked being, you know, on the road to recovery, even though I didn't really want to be. I mean, I wanted to be, but I didn't think I could, I guess. I didn't have faith in myself. And the more I faked it, the closer I got to this area. And then once I experienced this area, which is going a day or two or three or four days without binging and purging or starving or any of that stuff, then I was able to feel what that actually feels like and I wanted to do it more. Do you know what I mean? So it started that I didn't really think I could do it, but then faking it got me to here where I am actually doing it now. So I don't know if that's what you're talking about because I'm really slow, but I hope that that helps you. So thank you for the question. I love you. Ah, na, na, na. Okay, let's see, that's not a question. That's a good question. Ooh, that's a big question. Okay, Emma, Emma Marie says, if you could choose to never have an eating disorder, would you do it? Or are you glad you have learned from it? And then I love that. I love it when you guys talk to each other in the comments, like when you become friends and when you talk to each other, especially not to be self-centered, but I love it when you guys talk about me. Like it makes my heart sing and I just feel so flattered that there are people out there that care enough to take the time to talk about me, like in a good way. So, um, choose happy daily responded that and said, um, this is a great question. I hope she sees it. I saw it. 
I don't suffer from an eating disorder, but I do have other mental health problems, and I go between wishing that I was just normal, and then I think that I'm grateful for the struggles I've been through because it's part of the reason I'm the person I am today, and I can't imagine being someone else. Look forward to hearing Shani's response to your questions. And then Emma replied again, I suffer from these issues, and I think that's the best way to look at it. You can't change the past, but you can learn from it. Thank you. That's so sweet, you guys, when you talk to each other like that. So, Emma, um, so if I could choose, hmm, I feel like if, okay, if it wouldn't have affected my path to finding Danny, then I would choose to not have it. However, I know that it has. Like, I can trace it back all the way, okay? If I hadn't started binge eating at five years old, I wouldn't have gotten really overweight throughout my childhood years. And then when I went to junior high, teenager years, I wouldn't have started purging because I wouldn't have, the re the only reason I started purging is because I was so addicted to food, but the boys didn't like fat girls. And so I started purging. And then that went on and on. And had I not done that, I wouldn't have built such a low self-esteem within myself. This is, hold on, I'm going somewhere with this. Had I not built such a low self-esteem with myself, I would have probably um, been extremely bitchy. I'm not joking. Like I always had it inside of me that I wanted to be like those girls in school that were, even if they were bitches, they were popular and that's all that mattered to me and I don't know why, but it's true. I'm just being honest with you. And I feel like if I had had a better body or if I had had a better, um, what was the other thing I was talking about? Oh, a better self-esteem. I feel like that I would have got, gone in a direction, a different direction in high school. And like, I really wanted to be a cheerleader and I have nothing against cheerleaders. I'm not saying all cheerleaders are bitchy. Um, I certainly didn't have a lot of bitchy cheerleaders in my school, but in junior high, I wanted to shoot for that. And I didn't care how I treated, how I would have treated people if I was popular. Does that make sense? Like I was very twisted in my brain back then. So had I not had low self-esteem, I wouldn't have hung out with um, a crowd who thank thankfully loved me for who I was. I hung out with like the drama geeks and the choir geeks and people like that. And had I not done that, I wouldn't have met Jameson, which was my boyfriend my senior year, and he wouldn't have introduced me to Danny and I wouldn't have met Danny and loved him and got married. So I guess if Danny, if, if I still could have ended up with Danny, then maybe I wouldn't have chosen to have it. But then again, if I didn't have it, then I couldn't help you guys. Like I wouldn't even be here. Like this channel wouldn't even exist. Okay, long story short, I agree with the girl that said, <laughs> that said, I go between wishing that it was just normal and then I think I'm grateful for the struggles I've been through because it's part of the reason I'm the person I am today. Yeah, I agree completely with that and that took me forever to answer that, but that's the truth. Okay, thank you for the question. Okay, Jeannie says, question. Is there a way to live after recovering from major mental illness? As in, is there a way to find normal? Does that make sense? Probably. P.S. I love you, Shani. I love you too, Jeannie. Thank you. Um, I don't, that's a good question. I'm not quite there yet. So I can't really like answer it for you. All I can say is that I believe, I believe strongly that it's possible. I believe that it's strong, strongly that it's possible to have a good life after recovery. I think that we have it a little bit harder. We have a little bit of a roadblock that we're always going to have to deal with in our minds, but that doesn't mean that it's impossible. There are ways to work around it. There are ways to work through it. And this, the more you work at it, the stronger you become and the less it will attack you. So I definitely know that I'm going to get there someday. And I know that you will too. my elbow on the table <laughs> anyway so I don't know that's a good question I would like to hear from those of you that are fully recovered is it possible is there a way to live after life 
with an eating disorder? Is there a way to live after recovery? Recovering from a major mental illness, any mental illness, really. Okay. Holly, yes, I'm not sure if I should tell my friends about my eating disorder. I've told a few, but I'm worried that some of my other friends are cheat are catching on, and I don't want them to think I'm playing favorites or anything. I'm also worried that they might tell my parents. By the way, I love you and stay positive. Thank you, Holly. I love you too. I love that name. Um, Holly, that's such a beautiful name. Um, so you didn't really ask a question, but I just want to tell you that you should. You should tell whoever you can trust. And I know that right now it probably feels like your friends are the most important thing in your life. And maybe they are, and maybe there are people out there where their friends are their only family. But if you do have a family, if you do have parents, then I really suggest trying to tell them, go watch my video, how to tell your parents you have an eating disorder. Go watch both of them, see which one you like better. And I really would come out to them. I know your friends are important and that's okay. But just remember that your family is there for you forever, always, after high school, after everything. They're always gonna be there for you. So if you can find the courage, it will help you, I promise. And I'm proud of you for even talking about it. That's awesome, so. Ah. Ah. Mm. Okay, uh, re, R-H-I, Rye, re, retraining. Is that a joke? Is that really your name? Retraining? Or is it Rye Training? You're going to need to tell me below because I'm, now I'm curious. Okay. Hey, lovely Shani. Hi. I hope you feel better. Thank you. I'm feeling a lot better. Hearing you speak about Danny is so amazing. My question is, how do you think you were able to let love into your life with your eating disorder? I'm 27 and have not had a, a real relationship to speak of. I can't imagine anyone really wanting and loving me and I feel disgusted by my body. I feel completely locked in into this way of thinking i help people for a living and know that i'm a good person but that doesn't seem to mean anything in my mind nothing is ever enough do you have any tips thank you for your wonderful videos you are very you are a you really are a beautiful soul love from london re or rye thank you you're so sweet honey i love you too um okay so <laughs> How did I think I was able to let love into your life with my eating disorder? Well, into my life, I mean. Um, I should say, first of all, should I say this? I don't want this to come off as like cocky or arrogant or anything like that. I was extremely blessed to, and this is rare, I was extremely blessed to have somebody come into my life my husband, of course, and love me unconditionally, even though I didn't love myself yet. And that's rare because I don't, I always thought to myself, there's no way that I can find love with anybody or let it in, let them love me or whatever until I love myself. But Danny, I've said this over and over, that's why I consider him an absolute angel. Like I feel like he was sent to me not only to love me and marry me but also to help me like I feel like he he was sent to me to to show me what love means and to show me how to love myself and um that's rare but it's out there and you might find it but it's it's just rare like I never thought that would happen and if that doesn't happen for you, that's okay. Like, it's very rare that that happened. Um, and so I would just say that obviously it's going to be difficult to love, let, let love in with your eating disorder if you don't love yourself, um, but it is possible. And that's not to say don't try and love yourself first and just wait for some guy that's gonna love you for you and you don't have to do anything. Like, that's not what I mean. I just mean that don't give up, I guess. Don't give up hope. Like, try everything you can do to love yourself and the right person will come along and they'll find you and they will love you and you will love yourself even more um, once you see how powerful that love can be. Um, I'm sorry you're disgusted about your body. Obviously, I know what that feels like. I still know what that feels like. I hate my body very much and um, I'm healing in my mind with my eating disorder, but I'm still like even even the real Shani, like even the real part of me does not like my body and that's a big problem. 
and that's getting in the way, but you know, it happens and that's okay. And I can tell you that just looking at your profile picture, dude, you're freaking gorgeous. And I am sure because of how you talk to me, because of how wonderful and lovely you are, I'm sure that you are such a beautiful person inside as well. And so don't give up on yourself. Try and love yourself. Try and do what is what it is that you know will work in order for you to love yourself because you deserve that. Your future mate deserves that. And I absolutely know that it's possible for you. Um, yeah, you're worried no one will find, will love you because of your disgusting body. Um, again, like I always thought that too. I, I was convinced that no, I would never get married. I would never find a man that, that loved my body. Like who would love this? Who would love the fat rolls and the loose skin and the wrinkles and the, and the stretch marks everywhere and the cellulite everywhere. And, and who would love that? You know, who would love that? Um, but my husband does, he has never said one bad thing about the way that I look, about my body, um, my face, my hair, anything. In fact, he does the complete opposite every single day. Every time he sees me, he calls me beautiful. And they're out there. You just gotta work on yourself and and maybe that will help you. Maybe that will help you find them. I don't know, I don't know. Does this help at all? Am I coming off as super arrogant right now? Probably, but just know that I know that it can happen for you and you're beautiful and you're worth it. And I know that it will, so don't give up. Don't give up on yourself, so. Okay, let's open this. And then we're gonna end this video. Okay, so that's the end of the question. So after I shake it a few times, I do this. I tap the top, I don't know, like 50 times maybe. I, I lost count, I don't know. I just do it till I feel that the foam is gone or down. And then I barely only open it like the first little sound usually not that foamy but that's not bad either ah. and now it's less carbonated now it's just sugar water it's delicious though okay so this is the end of part one of today's q a video go ahead and go check out part two and i will see you in a minute for that and remember forever and always you are beautiful you are worth it, and I am too. Thank you for watching. Bye.